what's up everybody so welcome back to another video today we got a hot one for you okay so today i am posting some video and some analysis on some losses that i had two specifically um so yesterday um i thought i would I finally did some threes after like literally months of not healing threes ever and of course i messed up a lot and uh we're gonna go over what i did wrong and what i could have done better I hope you guys get this, get some good information out of this, and I uh, hope you enjoy. So this video is going to be sponsored by Squad OV, that little icon up there. This is a sick program that you, if you've not heard of, you could definitely get on uh, for a few reasons. I'm just going to give you guys a quick breakdown of how this works. Um, okay. So this is a program that will automatically save your VODs to your um, to the cloud. This is not like saving to your computer uh, by any means. But um, it will every every time you play a game, it will save it to your um, save it to your library here, and you can share, you can analyze it. So, for example, if I click on this game, you could do a playback on it. You can you know go wherever you want to go. It has areas where you have like death logs. So, if you want to go to where this guy died, skip right to there. Going down here, plenty of information that you can utilize if you want to you know. Utilize where like you're thinking where the bursts are, where the burst is, so you can go to that point in the game. So seeing where my damage was dealt, my damage received, and my healing. So like where my healing was the highest, I can go to that part in the game. You can all the times match up. You could check into spells and auras. So this is my buttons I pressed as the game went on. So all the buttons that I press and the auras that I had at the time. And you can, I guess you can shit this whole thing. There's a lot of buttons, obviously. So kind of like how true for gcd works but in you can check in the past if you don't use that add on yourself and you're rewatching the vod is that this add on actually would be sick to have now now think about it if you uh you are going to end up using this on your own um okay and you can check out all the player stuff so this is a cool thing a really cool feature that you don't have to look people up everything is right here for you so you i could check out my partners i was playing with banwell and numbing in these games i could check out all of banwell's soul binds his his conduits his 184 conduits Oh my god, this guy doesn't do Cordia, clearly. <laughs> so you can see everything on there, you can see your gear, your spec, whatever you want to see on there. Um, you can even check out the other team too as well, which is pretty pretty neat. But I don't have to like armory them or anything, and you have it all right here. Like this guy's got full 252 conduits. This guy, see this guy plays a game. This, guy, this is the other partner play the game. Um, and then cool, you can, obviously you can check out Deathlogs, like I said. Um, but yeah, this is the most useful thing I'm finding about this is that you can just go back on your games without having to record it anywhere. It was kind of annoying to go back in VODs. Sometimes, um, you know, you it's just kind of annoying to find, go back and like look through my Twitch VOD and find where it was. You can have every single game just listed right here. It records every game specifically. It cuts it at the beginning and the end, and you can analyze it. And the coolest part, finally, is the squad feature, why it's called Squad OV. So you can actually form a squad. So right now, this is my squad. I have six people in it here. What this does is it allows you to see all of my stuff. So if you want to, you know, you're interested in seeing how I play or how, um, like, in, or see how I play or want to learn what I'm doing, you can actually look back at all my VODs. Anytime I play a game, so this is my squad here, so you can see everyone's VODs here. Um, you can defer to not put your, uh, record your VODs up into this. Um, so like you can set it like if you want your VOD, your VODs to record into my squad, you can select it. If you don't want it, you just go in the settings and you can deselect where you want your VODs to be sent to. And just a side note down here, if you do put your VODs and just double check, um, that your, uh, your voice is not recorded. So like, if you click this thing here, there'll be a little, uh, voice thing that says like, is it, do you want your voice to re be recorded? Because people will be able to see your voice or hear your voice in the VODs. So just, you can hit the trash can on those two things. And they won't be able to hear anything. Like my VODs are completely muted. But the cool that's a cool thing. You can go to um, you know, in the squad, you can show filters, sort. I could if I want to watch any of these people's VODs, I can watch their VOD. It's really good for coaching as well. So if you know you use coaching for yourself or you want to do coaching with somebody, this is a great way to, you know, be able to show them all your VODs without having to like screen record and upload YouTube and stuff like that. You just click M markers and you'll see all of my games here. Shows you the rating, how long the game was, when the game was, and you can just go back and watch any game you want. So Cool, and you get that you get all of those breakdown analysis for every single game and you can even, you can even type in the date so if you want it you want to you saw you know you you played against me a certain day and you want to see how you did against me or what i was doing or something i don't know whatever you want to do the the, the, the possibility is you can make your own squad with your own team and you guys can analyze each other's vods like maybe you're a threes team 
and you want to do um like uh you want you want to analyze what each other are doing you guys can all record each other you know you'll all record yourself and then be in the same squad you can check out each other's point of view maybe what you could have done better what they could have done better stuff like that but anyway let's get back into it so that is squad i'll be i'm gonna leave a link in the bottom uh the first comment down below if you guys to join you can either to sign to download this it's not an add-on or anything you have to download this and then um the second link will be to join my squad if you are interested in that all right so let's get into my game logs here so the first game i wanted to show was this one here okay so preface this i haven't played threes in a while and i was rusty as hell i messed up so much and like you know between just positioning targeting everything was just a mess so this comp we're playing arcane uh, windwalker typically we're going to see i don't know first of all so and just for, for reference we usually open up in every comp it's um numbing will mass advis us he sheeps the healer i sheep i clone the off target we stun the kill target that's how everyone game goes for some reason the mass broke here right so you press mass i don't know i don't know what broke that to be honest so i ended up getting reflected which put us on the bad on the on a bad foot already Okay, so I go to overgrowth him. But this was another point. This was a bad idea here. So when it comes to positioning, especially when you're looking at paladins, what's your always threat? Hodge. Hodge can throw the shit off big time. So because of the fact I wasn't able to get that clone off of his poly, um, I shouldn't have even gone over there in the first place. First of all, I shouldn't have got cloned. Um, that mass broke, which was really bad. I don't know. How, I, too, I don't know how that broke. Okay, so because I couldn't get it, I should have gone. Actually, could have actually, I dropped combat there. I could have went stealth and stunned and then cloned him. Um, okay, anyway, this is a big burst combo from them, so I, I was forced out my trinket. Um, side note here, this is my this positioning is terrible. This is just terrible. Okay, so you know they're bursting right now. There's no reason I should be within these ranges here for them for like a swap something like that. So I end up going for a clone onto the warrior. Um, this guy doesn't have hod, so that's fine. Okay, I feel like I, I lost a lot of globals there. I didn't use anything, so I could have been hotting again too close here. Unless I'm going for a clone, which I, um, I was, I think I was at the time I was waiting to clone the, um, the paladin off of his poly, but he ended up trinketing. This is not a good position to be in. I'm in the mess of everything. I want to be near a pillar, somewhere where I can kind of get control of the game. I get fear because again, I'm just sitting in the middle. This is the doom winds ascendance. I have nothing now. I skin him. <laughs> He's okay for right now. This would have been a good opportunity. I would, I, he doesn't have sheer. But try to cc these guys a little bit more i maybe i could have definitely bashed i have bash and meld stun i could have double stunned both these dps and i uh, would have been okay he gets the sheep onto the warrior um and i go for a clone off i don't know why i canceled that i think i thought he had a reflect then i go for a clone there um uh, i have a stun i think i stunned him here he's stunned i stunned this guy i set him off and then he lives off the bop, okay? So because he lived off the bop, I might have had a split second to clone. So the second you usually see bop, sack, one of those big defenses from a paladin, you should be instantly thinking to clone. Okay, so he gets this off. Um, he had grounding up. Yeah, I might have been able to get that clone off. But here, this has happened like three times this game already. Look how many wasted globals I have. I'm just like, these, the past three seconds here, I'm literally doing nothing. I should be hunting, I should be cloning, I should be doing something, okay? So I end up going there. Okay, I start hotting him up. Got to watch for these hexes. I can't. I know. I know not to dispel the hex. You got to be careful with dispelling, especially in threes with double shackles. So if a target looks in trouble and they like, this is an obvious force on dispel. Um, the people like they do it with poly sometimes as well, like mages and rogue mage and whatnot. So just be cautious on your dispels. He ends up getting just this. Just yeah. Okay. So this was a mis misplay of globals here on my end. Okay, so did I use my Soul of Forest? I didn't use my Soul of Forest. So I had NS here. Oh, Mark, you're bad. <laughs> what did I press? Um, I pressed Life Bloom. I still have my Soul. I didn't think I knew I had Soul. This would have been a perfect NS. Yeah. So I think I pressed Swarm instead, right? No, I pressed the Spell. Okay, so that was a misplay on that end. So what I've experienced a lot with Shackle is Shackle is obviously a pain in the butt. But Swiftman, Nature Swiftness, will heal through it. So this was a this was a misplay on Globals. We would have actually lived and probably won the game if I just pressed NS there. Instead of pressing Dispel, when you have a Shackle and like they're doing damage, obviously, you know, execute. Sometimes it's better not to Dispel, but to just NS through it. 
Um, sometimes with mind games as well, like if you press mind games, you maybe you're going to get that BT dispel fear. It's actually better just to press NS off of it um, instead. So, yep, that game came down to just misplaying that. But in, in you know, as a game as a whole, really bad job on my positioning and uh, I had way too many down, way too many globals down, like where I was just kind of wandering around where I should have been either cloning or poly or cloning or, or hotting because uh, for the for the burst there. Okay, so and then the next game I wanted to see was it's another loss in here. It was hold on one second. Yeah, that's where was it? Where was it? I apologize. Which video was it? I did my head. Oh, here this one. I'm sorry. Yeah, here we go. Okay, this is against Enhance uh, Warrior again. This is the same comp, but you can see a lot of the same issues that are happening here. So this is a big. This is something that's going to come with time. So like you know the positioning, being aware of what your comp is, what your role in the comp is. So in this comp, I need to be getting clones. This is not playing double melee where I sit in the back and just hot. Um, I, I need to be active on my clones, uh, whether it's offensively or defensively. So I need to be, you know, positioning in the wall. So we get a good opener here. We do it just like I said, he mass, and then he keeps he sheeps the healer. I call an off target. We get the shaman's trinket right off the bat. Wall, um, grounding. Okay, so this was a case where I should have been cloning. There, he doesn't have shear or ground. There's no reason why I shouldn't have cloned that pol uh, office pilot here. He get after that grounding. We're not taking any damage. There's no reason. So this is a problem on positioning i was just not close enough because if i if i if i wanted to go for this clone i have to run through these guys and i think the warrior the warrior comes back in anyway yeah so i think i tried to go for the clone but i was i messed up on my position i should have tried to get into a better position to follow up on the clone when you're playing mage druid that's what something you got to be looking for this clone was kind of unnecessary uh but it ended up not being too bad it, at the time it was bad but because this warrior popped every single cooldown it actually wasn't that bad he pops every single cooldown. I prep it with overgrowth, iron barks, um, swarm, thorns, everything on top of it. I get kicked there. I go for follow up onto the healer to a bash clone. This is great. Nothing wrong with that. And then I go for a stun to help them. Okay, I go for the follow clone. This is me. I, I watch. I, I messed up there. I you know, I should have looked out for the shear. Um, it might have been a better job to try to fake there, or maybe could I get a, maybe I could have gotten to a better position to get that clone second clone. Not really. Yeah, that's just this is kind of nothing I could have done there. That's just like the sheer just came up, so that's kind of just a tough position there to be in. Okay, so I start hotting up again. This isn't bad. Okay, so right here, this looks like this is bad. Okay, so he has Hodge. My guy is like half health. Doomwind's procked, and this is a bad situation. I should not be anywhere near this guy because I'm. It's it's a hundred percent gonna force my trinket. Okay, so I, I start moving that way was great, but I freaking came back, man. So this, just, just like I said, um, get that Hodge on me. And now he gets Hodge into a blind, forces out my Trinket NS. When otherwise, it probably wouldn't have. Because if he didn't, if, if that wasn't the case, if I didn't get Hodge there, there um, I'm pretty sure I could have gotten, he wouldn't have got the blind. And I would have been able to keep him. I, I might have been able to keep our mage up um, a bit better. Well, he, he altered very well there. I didn't need to Trinket. We'll just say that. So I randomly, I got a resell because he masked, so I go for the setup onto the this, this guy, and then I look to get the clone off. He trinkets. Okay, so this is the case right here. Okay, um, was I cloning the Paladin? Yeah, I was. Okay, so I needed to be better at reacting on this. So the second, this was this was all good. Perfect setup here. Nothing wrong with this at all. There's no picks. There's no nothing. He prowls us. He goes for a door sheep. This guy is on door DR, which is a door, a door shadows DRs with clone. So it's not a super important, it's not super important for me to get the clone right here. But what I should have looked for is the bubble. So he bubbled, I should have been cloning him immediately. There is, uh, oh, he did have shear, but I should have been going for a, shear, a clone on that. That would have been a sick clone if I got it. He has no trinket. I would have had a juke shear. This shackle was useless. I could have done maybe, um, yeah, that was a terrible shackle. Um, like I guess I, I either cloning the shaman would have been good there or just repositioning because like again I'm, I'm close I don't want to be in proximity to this fight at all like especially for sheer so I get feared again this is just like the last game I was just too close I get feared and then they force out everything from this 
Okay, this was good. Um, then he just dies, huh? Okay, this was a bad global swarm. This swarm blew the game here. Um, this should have been because I had time here. Uh, after that, this uh, swift men should have been regrowth. He did have he did have shear, which would have been rough to get about get around. Maybe that's why I didn't cast. But that's just unfortunately a lot of damage. There was no there was no burst really. It was just warbreaker, warbreaker spear. There was no uh, doom winds. There was no avatar. No ascendance. Just unfortunate. I don't know if we could have. Uh, I wasn't sure these cool. Was that, was that tracking port on here? I'm not too sure. Um, but anyway, this game came down to the positioning again. I'm just too close on this. So everything was really good in this game until this part, which is just like what happened in the last game. Um, I need to just be more aware of my positioning here. So like I said, like I said that door shadows was fine. I, there is no reason for me to overextend for the clone here. I could have maybe, I could have probably sat in the back here uh, behind the tomb and be just fine like back here and just kept potting up and waited for the next go. Because he has sheer. Um, I go, if I could, if I could, if I could have got the clone, that would have been great, but I didn't. So the shackle was stupid. Instead of the shackle, I should have been running back and getting distance. So then this was, this was also a double fear too. Now I, I'm looking at it again. So if that, maybe if that wasn't a double fear, numbing could have maybe, uh, you could have ulterior and punched one. You could have polyed one and we probably would have lived. He could have spammed probably the, uh, the warrior on the warbreaker and probably would have lived. So that's my best on that against just for the positioning. And then we lose the game because of that. All right. So that's that on the review. So this is actually this. Is, I highly recommend downloading this 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 uh, this program to look back at games because I'm seeing stuff that I didn't even notice in the beginning. Um, it's really, 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 really good to look back in your games and you, and um, you know you can share these. You can clip from this. You can download um, clips and whatnot from this as well because this is what's going to get you better when you start playing. When you're when you're especially when you're trying to push rating and you're hitting those barriers. You got to find what you're doing wrong against some of these comps and you got to fix it. And sometimes it's, it's a lot going on. Like sometimes after our game, we'll, they'll be like, what did you trick it? Or what did you use? What did you do here? And I'm like, I don't know. And then, you know, you can always just look back at, at these vibes and, you know, help out and try to fix it. So uh, I hope you guys learned something from that. My, uh, I know it was a little bit all over the place, but I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, I'll leave those links down below. If you guys do want to get squad OV, I highly recommend it. And uh, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.